So I, I wanted to post a comment about the documentary and fill in some, um, some things that didn't get addressed in an update. Um, what, what the documentary can't show is the uh, five months to a year of fighting with the whole adoption agency trying to get my records and trying to contact Kim Suk Ja, my possible sister. Um, you know, 40 plus emails, untold phone conversations, uh, having to go public with my story just to get a response. It, it hasn't been easy. And what I don't understand is why they weren't forthcoming with all of the documents to begin with. But they weren't. The one, the one document that had the um, the irregular information on it was really, really difficult to obtain. And it was difficult to obtain because it was in Korea, and they just don't want to give up those records. Uh, they say they don't give those records up because they want to protect parents but in my case I was abandoned so that argument falls on its face um, I obtained this still from the video from the documentary showing a photo of myself So Young Suk on the left and Kim Suk Ja on the right side by side and um, while the documentary left people with the idea that we couldn't be sisters because there were two different handwriting styles in the document, further study um, to me keeps the possibility wide open and uh, in my mind, it has not been overruled. So if you look at these two photos side by side, I see quite a few similarities in the shape of our mouths, uh, in the area between the eyes and the forehead. And below the two photos are my two children they, when they were small. And on the right is my son who also bears a family resemblance. Um, after living in Korea for a while, I, I definitely know that not all Asians look alike. And for two people to share any similarities at all, given the fact, the circumstances, that they were found on the same day in the same place, um, I think is, is a little extraordinary.